Hello everyone. Today we are going to talk about how to use uh, AppScale with BerkeleyDB installed. And uh, we have modified the AppScale source code and add BerkeleyDB in the AppScale. So today I'm going to show you how to how to use AppScale with BerkeleyDB. Um, first uh, let's uh, take a look at the configuration file. Uh, actually, uh, before before you are doing this, you should uh, first reinstall the AppScale and AppScale tools with the source code that we have modified. But uh, since that will take a, a very long time, uh, I'm already installed that in in the local machine, and uh, I, I have already uh, I have already have the. Uh, configuration file here. Let's take a look at the configura configuration file here. So as you, you can see, I have already set the IP address uh, for the master app engine database and the zookeeper. And now we are using the default uh, database, which is Cassandra. Now all you need to do is to use App scale up to put up app scale. Now it's putting up. Uh, okay, this this will take a, a very long time. Let's first take a, take a look at the configuration file here. Uh, this is the configuration file. And uh, in the configuration file, uh, the first thing you, you need to do is to set the IP address for the uh, four nodes in, in app scale, which is the master node, app engine node, database node, and the zookeeper node. Since we are just using uh, one node, one uh, virtualized cluster for all the four nodes, we are setting uh, the same IP address for all of them here. And uh, and if you want to set them uh, with different IP address, you can just uh, uncomment this and uh, set set them with different IP address. And uh, and sorry. And uh, this atom this atom here will show. Uh, we will let uh, AppScale app know which database you want to use. Now AppScale uh, supports Cassandra, HyperTable, uh, Hyper HBase, and SimpleDB, and so on. Since we have added the BerkeleyDB in AppScale, uh, if you want to use uh, BerkeleyDB as your database, you can just uh, change this to Berkeley. DB so so that app scale will know that you want to use Berkeley DB as a database. Let's take a look at uh, how it's running. Okay, it's it's finished running. Now we need to put our our email address here to ac get access to the to the app we want to use. Okay, it's creating. Uh, now as you can see. App scale is uh, successfully started. You can uh, check the app scale status using this command. Here, you can check the status. Here, you can also uh, copy this URL and uh, see the status here. Now, as you can see, we are using Cassandra here. And uh, app scale is already running. If we want to uh, now, if we want to deploy uh, uh, an app to app scale, all we need to do is uh, here we have a sample app here. It's called uh, Guest Book. If we want to deploy this this app, all we need to do is to use app scale deploy. And the guest book. This will work. So we need to put our email address here and uh, creating copying. It's starting the server. Let's see how it goes. 
Okay. I think this is going to take a while. Okay. Okay, here. <sighs> okay, it's done. So, uh, the app is already deployed. We can copy this URL to get access to the guest book. Here. See, this is the uh, this is the uh, uh, guest book application. We can in, we can input anything here and uh, use some guest book. It will show at the web at the web page. Oh, we can word. See, see now it's working. Okay, now we have uh, did the demo with. Uh, with the Cassandra database, let's use BerkeleyDB as our database. As I have mentioned, if you want to use BerkeleyDB, you need to modify the uh, configuration file here and uh, change and change Cassandra with BerkeleyDB. BerkeleyDB. Okay. And before you start upscale again, you need to first uh, clean uh, clean the previous upscale. So we use upscale clean. Okay. Okay, it's already cleaned. Now all you need to do is to use app scale up to start app scale. As you can see here, now now it's starting up with Berkeley DB. Here, Berkeley DB. Okay, while it's starting, I can uh, let me show you how we modified the source code to make. Upscale support uh, Berkeley DB. So uh, here, uh, these two director uh, we modify the source code in these two directories. Uh, first, uh, we need to uh, tell Upscale how to install and uh, uh, how to install Berkeley DB. Okay, it's actually in this directory. App. I think it's in this directory. In this directory here. Uh, in here we uh, we implemented a function to tell AppScale how to install Berkeley DB. It's in the uh, AppScale build. Here, okay. So, uh, before we before we implement the function to tell AppScale how to install BerkeleyDB, we first need to modify modify the uh, modify here to let uh, AppScale know that uh, now it can support BerkeleyDB. And after this, we need to. Uh, And we need to modify this file uh, as a as a fun as a install install function in this file. Sorry. Okay, this is the function we implemented to tell AppScale how to install Berkeley DB. Uh, since uh, since most of the code for AppScale is written in Python. We used uh, the uh, Python wrapper of Berkeley DB, which is BSDDB3. First, uh, so first we need to install Berkeley DB like this, and then we need we need also to install BSDDB3 like this. Okay, let's see how it goes now. Okay, now as you can see, now it's already started with Berkeley DB. We can. Add our email address here, 
and the password and the password see uh, now it's already successfully started with Berkeley DB we can also see the status of our app scale using this URL here Right. See. Uh, okay. See now it's working. And uh, okay, I'm going to hand uh, hand over my headphone to my colleague, so he will introduce uh, how we implemented uh, the uh, write and uh, read interface of BerkeleyDB. Hello everyone. So this is Alex. Um, gonna be explaining a little bit of how we actually wrote the code um, to read and write. So we have these directories. We go to app skill, um, apps db for databases, and in this in this directory there's actually like different file different uh, uh, databases that the app skill already comes up, comes with. Um, so if you want to add a new database, you'd put your directory here in this file. So in, in our case, it was uh, Berkeley DB. So we go to Berkeley DB. And so in Berkeley DB, we have these files. Uh, um, we have a helper for uh, start how to tell um, uh, app scale controller how to access a startup and uh, and, and the uh, servers. We have a uh, interface to read and write, and we also have uh, uh, this Pi Berkeley uh, DB, and also this uh, Prime. If I can find it, oh here, Prime Berkeley DB. So those are the main files that you need. You also need this init Pi, but it doesn't really have anything. If you just cat it, it doesn't have anything. It's just something that the uh, system needs for you to know. So if you're trying, those are the main files that you need if you're trying to build your own. Um, Berkeley DB, uh, I mean, sorry, uh, database for AppScale. So if we look at the source code for, uh, let's look at the uh, Berkeley DB helper first, because that's how it's implemented. As those, these are the steps that um, you should proceed in when you're trying to do this. For helper, is pretty easy for Berkeley DB because it's an embedded database. Um, so we don't really need to start up anything other than just uh, this server nodes which is we do we do this by uh, starting up this uh, Berkeley DB SVC and we specify where we want to store the uh, actual files that we're saving since uh, Berkeley DB saves the databases and files so we're saying we store it in var app scale data, uh, Berkeley DB slash database um, so all the files are gonna, all the databases are gonna be stored there. So that's that's just master, but slave is exactly the same because we don't distinguish whether um, one's a master is a slave. So it's pretty much just, it's essentially the same thing. Um, uh, so yeah, and you just stop it, you just kill that that thread that we started up. Um, this Berkeley DB SVC. So that's pretty simple. It like if you if you're implementing your own uh, database, you'd have to start up and end your uh, master and slave nodes. This so this is when you're adding multiple uh, databases, f m multiple servers for your database. For example, you have two nodes instead of one. Um, you'd modif this this file tells it tells AppScale how to how to start them up and how to how to end them. So if we look at Berkeley DB uh, interface, this tells it how to read and write. Um, there's a couple main functions that you um, should write. There's put, get put, and uh, create tables, and get range. So get is pretty simple. You just get they just pass a, pass you a table name, a table name, uh, row keys, and a column name, and it. Exp does a pretty good job explaining the arguments. Um, so in our case, since we're using Berkeley DB, we're using an embedded database. We just read from this file um, 
and we uh, for each table we save it as a database and we save the columns as a database the reason why is because uh, uh, BSDDB3 only saves uh, things in strings so we couldn't really come up with the data structure although Berkeley DB does support data structures for many programming languages just not this wrapper so it's pretty simple we create an environment and within the environment we create different databases um, so so all the all of the databases be stored in this table um, and that's we just open the database and we s just get Get whatever was asked what was in the in the row of that specific column of the of the of the table mm. and put is very similar to that except we just instead of getting you you just you just put something here so that's pretty much the same thing um, the only difference is now you have this cell of values which is just like a matrix of values you can ask it by row and column. Batch delete is similar, but you delete a a specific set of keys for all the all the columns specified. If they don't specify anything, they just want you to delete all the all the keys. And so it's pretty simple. We just um, for each of the databases we delete all of the all of the um, all of the keys associated with that column because like I said before we had to split each column for we had to save each column as a different database because we are only limited we, we could only work with strings and so those are pretty much similar and um, the other thing I didn't mention is that when we choose a specific um, which if we're working with multiple databases how we choose which databases to store the the key is we just have the simple hash and we store store based on like the key value if the key value is a certain hash then we store a specific database um, but that's that's really up to the database uh, up to you how your database handles uh, multiple data uh, uh, distribution how your hand how your database handles distribution through multiple databases um delete is similar uh but you just have delete instead of uh the oh this is delete table delete table you just delete the environment um and the environment takes care of how to delete all the databases so that's that's pretty simple create table you just create table but we have to create these column names because otherwise we wouldn't know how to access the column names um, because we store those databases separately um, and range queries is just given a table name and a column name start and you just specify the range of which you want to read a specific number of keys so you specify the start key and you specify the end key and within that range you're supposed to return all the values associated or if they specify these keys only you return uh, the, the the keys and so that's how we did and that's pretty much all of the things in Python